Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit 2, lesson 2. Here are circles C and D. Point O is the center of dilation, and the dilation takes circle C to D. Plot a point on... Move that so you can see it. Plot a point on circle C, label the point P, plot where P goes when the dilation is applied. So that's a point, your point can be anywhere. If that is P when the dilation is applied, P prime has to follow this line So P prime would be here because we follow the line through the center of dilation through our point. Plot a point on circle D, label the point Q, Q. Plot a point that takes the dilation to Q. So what point would bring it to Q? Again, we have to follow the line through the center of dilation. That would be here. Here is triangle ABC. Dilate each vertex of triangle ABC using point P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 2. Well, A is 1, 2 units away. Scale factor of 2, 2 units will become 4. Point C is 1, 2, 3 units away. 3 times 2 is 6. B is 1, 2, 3, 4 units away. 4 times 2 is 8. That would be there. See just how well I can draw this. Our new triangle with a scale factor of 2. Question B, we'll use a different color, dilate each vertex of ABC using P as the center of dilation, scale factor of 1 half. From the center of dilation to A is 2 units. 2 times 1 half is 1. Call that A double prime. C is 3 units. 3 times 1 half is 1 and a half. And B is 1, 2, 3, 4 units away. 4 times a half is 2. That point has to go right here. B double prime. A new smaller triangle because our scale factor was one half. The scale factor was between zero and one. Measure the longest side of each of these three triangles. This distance, this distance, this distance. Going from this one to the longest one will be double. From this one to the shortest one will be half. So, What do we notice? Bigger is double. Smaller is half. The Reinhard Walker, please pick up parked call zero three. Parked call zero three. Half of the original. Okay, next measure the angles of each triangle. 
Well, the angles are all the same. Okay, next, describe a rigid transformation that you could use to show polygons are congruent. Okay, the first thing I would do is reflect triangle ABC over a vertical line. You could do the vertical line through A. It doesn't really matter that much. A prime, B prime, C prime. Then I would do a translation, a slide moving, let's use C prime to F. A translation from C prime to F. We'll put that triangle on top of this triangle. And if there is a rigid transformation taking one to the other. The two triangles have to be congruent to each other. Next, the line has been partitioned into three angles. Is there a triangle with these three angle measures? Well, these three angles, 39, 99, 42. If that is a line, those three angles have to have a sum of 180 degrees. And the sum of every triangle is 180 degrees, which means these three angles have to make a triangle. Okay, that was the last one. Sorry about all the noise snuck in this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.